Alright, so in this video I'm going to talk about moments and how you can calculate them and how you can use them to solve unknowns in certain setup. So just a quick word of warning, um, before you start this you're going to need to make sure you know how to resolve properties into perpendicular components. There is a video on my Mechanics 1 channel if you want to look that up, uh, but I'm going to assume you know how to do that based on the fact that this is M2 stuff following on from M1. So, let's get started. Alright, so a moment is when you have a force applied to an object that causes it to rotate about a certain point, and that point is called a pivot point. So if you see here, we have a seesaw, so we have it pivoting about this point here. So usually there's like a bolt going into the post, and then they're free to move up and down, so it rotates about this point. So that's your pivot point, and the force that's causing that is the weight force of each of these people causing a moment, and a moment causes it to rotate. So when we're describing moments, we describe them whether they're causing it to rotate anti-clockwise or whether they're causing it to rotate clockwise. Um, so, so we always talk about it in those terms. Okay, so let's have a look at a bit more detail. So you calculate a moment by multiplying the force by the perpendicular distance from the pivot point. So just to show you what those are, so if we look at this example here, let's look at this little guy at the top, so his force, his weight force is going to be acting that way, and the perpendicular distance from that is this distance here, along here. Or well, the other way of doing it is working out what the component perpendicular to the plank is, so we want to know the weight force in this direction, and then the perpendicular distance is the distance along the beam like that. So there's two ways of doing it, and they both allow you to calculate the moment, in this case would be clockwise, since the weight force of this guy is trying to make the plank rotate that way, it's just that the weight force of the what should we say this rather larger gentleman is causing a much greater anti-clockwise moment which is why he goes down and this person ends up going up. So one way you can increase your moment is by increasing the weight force by increasing the mass. The other is by increasing the perpendicular distance. So if you have two people of the same mass and weight force on a seesaw and one sits further back or further away from the pivot point they'll have a greater moment and so it will rotate in the direction of their weight force and so they'll go down. Okay, so that's moment. So let's have a look at some examples. Um, so if you know anything about weights, maybe forces and moments, maybe from doing uh, AS physics, you might want to skip onto the more complicated examples that was on. But let's get started from this example here. So let's first label some forces on our diagram. So the only force acting here is 70 times g the field strength of Earth or the acceleration due to gravity. And that's the only force acting on it. So we know that the moment here is the force times the perpendicular distance. So in this case we know the force is the weight force, so it's just 70 g and you multiply that by perpendicular distance, which is 2, and you end up with a total of 1, 3, 7, 2 newton meters, which is the unit of moments, since you've got newtons from force multiplied by the distance in meters, so newton meters. Okay. There it is nicely typed out, in case you couldn't read my handwriting. Let's move on. Okay, so a slightly more complicated example. So we've got a slope, which, or a, so a seesaw, which is currently tipped up this way, and we want to know the moment in this case. So let's draw in our force again. So the force is going to be acting that way, and it's 70 g. Now, what I said, you have two options here. We could either calculate what this distance is and then do force times distance, or 
we can work out the perpendicular component of the weight force, which is my preferred method of doing it. So you can sit and puzzle out for a second how I know that that's 30 degrees if you like. It's simply based on the fact that this angle here must be 60 degrees since 60 plus 30 plus 90 is 180, which means that 90 minus 30, 60, sorry, gives you 30 in that angle there. So if we want to work out the moment here, so we're looking at the moment about the pivot point. So it's force times perpendicular distance. So let's work out the force. So it's 70 G cosine 30 to work out the component perpendicular to the slope. So then we can just use the distance given. And then if we type those in, we come out at 1160 Newton meters, two, three significant figures. There are more terms and I have rounded it, but three sig figs would be appropriate in this situation here. Okay, so then we've introduced looking at some angles in there. So let's look at a even more comp There it is typed out as usual. Okay, so the more difficult questions, they tend to make it a bit harder by not giving you a diagram. So the first thing you always have to do, therefore, is construct a diagram. So let's do that. So we've got a uniform beam, so let's just draw a beam in, and we know the ends are A and B. And it has length of 5. Okay, so let's mark the length on it like that. And it has mass of 8. And since I said it's a uniform beam, that means we can assume the force acts from the geometric centre, which is going to be HG. Okay, and it's held, held by vertical ropes. Uh, B has one there, let's call that tension B. Another one at C, which is one meter from A, so let's call that tension C. And we know that is one meter. Okay, so we're going to place a 16 kilogram object on the beam and it's going to remain in equilibrium and horizontal, but it's the point of tilting about C. So what that means is that here, where C is on the beam, it's at the point where it's going to rotate about where the rope is fixed. Okay, so let's mark in C. Now there's a few things you can deduce from the way this problem has been set up. Okay, so if you're going to rotate about C, you have to place the object somewhere in this region here which will cause it to rotate up or anti-clockwise like that. So B would go up and A would go down. Because if you put the object in here, it wouldn't cause the object to rotate at all. These two ropes here would just hold the mass much like they do this other beam. So it wouldn't actually have an effect on the problem and it wouldn't cause a moment. So we know the object is somewhere in here. And we also know that if it rotates about C, at the point it's about to start rotating, that's going to cause this rope to become slack because as B goes up, this will no longer be tight, so it will no longer be in tension. So actually, we can forget about the tension in B because it's told you it's on the point of tilting about C. Okay, so let's think about how we're going to solve this. All right. So let's take some moments in this problem, since it's at the point about rotating, and let's take the moments about C. Since we don't know what the tension is in C, it makes sense to take it out of the equation. So if we look here, so moments going clockwise, we just have 1.5 times 8 G, which is 12G, and anti-clockwise we're going to have the distance from C we don't know, but we know it's 16G. So what I'm saying is that if we're going to put the object here on the diagram, X 
is this distance here. And we'll have to deal with that a bit later on. So let's scroll down. So you know that 12g is equal to x times 16g. So you know that x is 16g. Those cancel to leave you with 0.75, and we know it's a meter. Now the question asked you the distance from A um, so we need to calculate what that is from A it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.75 oh, just one was, which is 0.25 meters which is the final answer to the question it was looking for Let's just have a look at a couple of choices I made in here so you can understand how I made them. So that's the getting to the answer bit, which isn't particularly interesting. So let's chuck that off the screen. Okay. So the question is, first of all, why did I choose to take Mozart C? And the key thing is, you notice here that there's no perpendicular distance between the tension in the rope at C and the point I'm taking moments about. So that means when you're doing your moment calculations, you'd multiply the tension in C by zero, so you're eliminating it from the problem. So that's a good way of getting unknown, rid of unknowns if you have them in your problem. And that was the critical point in getting your solution to this and getting this nice simple problem here. Start recognizing we want to get rid of that so then we can do these calculations. So then okay, we've got this here and summary of what I did in that problem and it nice neatly typed out there.